the airport. All right. Airport. Uh, welcome to everybody Sorry. to the East Consolidated Zoning Board meeting for August 7th, 2024. Uh, I'm Rod Richardson, uh, Kelly Rast to my left. I'm the vice chair. I'll be serving tonight in the capacity of uh, substitute chair. Uh, we have two members that are um, uh, attending virtually and two that are absent. So um, or no, two that are attending virtually and three that are here. Sorry. So if, um, uh, if uh, Madam Secretary, you'd call the roll. Dan Foyle. Present. Ken Sanderson. Present. Kelly Rost. Present. Fred Winger. Present. Rod Richardson. Present. And Ken Klingen Smith is absent. All right. And I will go ahead and do the roll call. Or the, I'm sorry, this Zoom. Yes, the statement for hybrid in person virtual meeting. Thank you. This meeting is now being recorded in the board hearing room with zoning board members attending in person. There's also an option for virtual attendance on Zoom webinar. For Zoom attendees wishing to speak, please use the raise hand function in the Zoom app at the start of the agenda item on which you desire to comment. Comments will be received from in-person attendees first, followed by Zoom participants. When it's your turn to speak, the moderator will recognize you by your name or number listed to join the Zoom webinar, and your microphone will be unmuted. Please state your name in the city and state where you reside for the record, followed by your comments. All public speakers will be limited to three minutes unless the chair designates a different time period. If you have trouble with Zoom, please call 913-715-9666. Board members, staff, and presenters, please state your name every time you begin talking and please speak into the microphone so that people attending via Zoom can hear you and the comments can be trans transcribed for the record. This is a public meeting. We are presenting live and recording the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rod Richardson, Chair. Uh, next item on the agenda is the agenda items themselves. Do we have any motions to add, delete, or revise the, uh, uh, or revise and approve the agenda? Are there any additions or deletions, or revisions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda as written? So moved, Ken Sanderson. Kelly Ross, second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I don't hear any. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed, none. All right. Uh, any disclosure of conflicts of interest on the board? Hearing none. Uh, disclosure of external contacts or discussions concerning the matter before our aboard this evening. Hearing none. Next item is the approval of minutes for June 5th, 2024. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written or uh, a motion to amend accordingly. I move that we approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Kelly and Sanderson. It's been moved and seconded by Kelly. All right, very good. Uh, the minutes are approved. Next item is board reports. Um, uh, Sean or Michelle, whoever, um, board of county commissioner actions, please. Good evening. Thank you, uh, Sean Penley, county planning staff. Uh, yeah, for our board of county commissioners actions, uh, if you recall the last meeting for this board on June 5th, as uh, was noted in the minutes, uh, there was one application. It was a conditional use permit for the St. John Paul II school at 16740 West 175th Street. Uh, if you recall, the, the board considered that public hearing item and recommended approval of the application. That was considered for final action by the Board of County Commissioners on July 18th, and they did approve that conditional use permit. So that application uh, was approved. That was the only application and only update for Board of County Commissioners. Um, if you'd like, I could continue with the Planning Commission. Yes, please. Okay. The last Planning Commission meeting was on June 25th. And at that meeting, there was a presentation by a JCPRD regarding various parks projects. And that was just an item just for uh, information and to, for re receipt by the Planning Commission. There was also uh, staff presented a, a survey of the Planning Commissioners for future training uh, opportunities. And that was well received. I think uh, all of the commissioners now have responded. So staff is putting together a future training schedule and some updates for the planning commission. Um, and uh, the only other item to note that the next planning commission meeting is on August 27th. Very Happy good. to answer any of the questions. Any questions? Not hearing any. All right. 
Well, that brings us to the business before the board this evening. We have one item that is application number E24-400 CUP, a conditional use permit for 20750 Foster Court from Phelps Engineering, the applicant and ESS Properties LLC, the landowner. This application requests a revision of an existing conditional use permit to allow construction of a building addition and new vehicle equipment wash building for the existing construction office shop and, and uh, equipment materials yard um, on 15.74 acres uh, on property zone PEC3, Planned Light Industrial Park District, Section 18 Township 15, Range 25. Mr. Pendley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sean Penley, planning staff will be presenting this um, for the staff report that was submitted by Karen Miller that's included in your packet. This request is, as noted, uh, it's a revision of an existing conditional use permit for Emory Sapp and Sons uh, to allow for a construction of a, a building addition and a new vehicle and equipment wash building. Uh, the subject property is located at 20750 Foster Court. This is an aerial photo showing the uh, subject property. It's located south of 207th Street and approximately half a mile west of Metcalf Avenue. This is within an existing industrial park um, just south of 207th Street. Uh, so currently the site um, has uh, existing uh, 9,800 square foot contractor shop building with office and break room and, a, and an 8,000 square foot storage building. Uh, this is the north, uh, this aerial view here is showing the north half of the property, which is the primary area that, that developed on the site. So this is uh, looking uh, south, um, kind of a bird's eye view here, uh, showing the existing site for the, the development. Uh, the majority of the site is uh, surfaced with uh, either a, a concrete paved area or uh, dust-free gravel surface area for the storage of vehicles and equipment and materials. Um, this, uh, there, as I'll note here in a little bit, there, the existing condition of use permit has had a couple of different versions approved in 2010 and 2014. I'll note that in just a minute. But uh, the proposal, um, let's see if I can get this to advance here. This is the proposed site plan showing the uh, existing development and proposed addition. So with this proposal for the conditional use permit, the applicant is requesting uh, the construction of a 16,125 square foot addition to the existing shop building to the west of the existing building. In addition, uh, they're requesting a 3,000 square foot vehicle and equipment wash building located to the south of the existing building. Uh, and this will, uh, this will allow for uh, the addition of the shop and, and vehicle and equipment uh, cleaning. There's also, uh, will be additional parking provided on site and a fire access lane provided around the building. This is a close up view of the proposed development uh, with the kind of aerial layer shown here, but this shows the area again for the proposed addition, a little bit more detail and the wash building with the additional paved and access area to the south. All other uses on the site will remain as existing. As noted in the history uh, for the site, there was a renewal approved in 2010 for the conditional use permit. And at that time, there were multiple, uh, there, there are multiple conditional use permits, but there are three lots that are a part of this uh, subdivision uh, for the Metcalf 207 second plat. This is the far west site, which is lot seven. And this has, each of them have their own conditional use permit. So this will effectively be an update to that. In 2014, there was another update that, that effectively separated these. And so this will be, um, this will supersede the existing conditional use permit that was approved in 2014. And at that time, that CUP was approved with a term of 30 years. Uh, further review, uh, looking at the uh, uh, proposal for the from a conditional use permit, staff did review this uh, with uh, comparison to all the regulations and the comprehensive plan and the golden analysis. The site, the subject property is, okay, uh, is zoned PEC3, planned light industrial park, and all surrounding properties are also zoned PEC3 industrial. So this is consistent with existing development and surrounding 
development and zoning. So in terms of zoning, it's no change. Uh, there are some other uh, rural or residentially zoned properties further west and east, but everything that's immediately surrounding this is all industrial. Um, just a couple other additional items to note here. Um, as noted, um, the existing contractor shop and office and, and storage yard will remain as it is currently. The only change here will be to allow an addition uh, a building area to the shop and the vehicle wash bay. Um, the, the conditional use permit uh, was previously approved as I noted for a 30 year term. This will supersede, this CUP will supersede that. There are other items to note. The existing site does have existing um, forgot to point this out in the aerial photo, but there are existing trees surrounding the property that provide uh, screening and, and buffering from the surrounding area. And it really, you cannot even see this site from most public areas. From 207th, you, you virtually don't see the site. Um, you have to drive into Foster Court it, within the industrial park to see it. So it's very well screened from the surrounding area. The applicant also did provide an updated traffic analysis with this proposal. And the Public Works Department did accept that uh, analysis. Since the, they're only adding an additional five employees with this addition, it's not expected to generate any significant impact as far as traffic generation in the area. So meets all the requirements of the zoning regulations and staff does recommend approval of the conditional use permit uh, as noted in the staff report, and that includes a 30 year term. The one change I will note, um, the applicant in looking at the, the stipulations that staff had, the applicant did request a revision to stipulation number one. Uh, there was the previous CUP had the same stipulation. And on the final sentence, it says storage of inoperable wrecked or salvaged vehicles or equipment shall be prohibited. The applicant just requested a, a change to that, a minor change to note that maybe only this applies to permanent storage because they currently operate and work on uh, vehicles and, and equipment that is in need of repair and that may be wrecked or in, in storage on site for their purposes. So to avoid any confusion, um, I think the intent of this stipulation was staff just want to make sure this didn't become a salvage yard, but we, we know that the, the applicant is not using it as such. So to clarify, we, we agree with the applicant. We could add the word permanent storage of inoperable wrecked salvage vehicles shall be prohibited. There have been no issues with the current uh, use. We just want to clarify that. So staff would recommend approval with that one change to stipulation one. Uh, and that concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions by board members of Mr. Pendley or staff? I'm Ms. Kelly Ross. I just had a question, curious, and also just since Ken's not here to talk about the lighting, since he always brings up, I see that there was a stipulation with the lighting. And so it's noted what the lights are. And because I don't um, wasn't quite as familiar as Ken usually is with the exact still wall plan, I went on to the um, still well plan, I saw that it was removed. So it's no longer on the still well site. You have a picture of it and it refers you to the county. So I just didn't know, um, since you specifically stipulated uh, the lighting as a stipulation, it, does it, you know, uh, fall within the still well plan guidelines? I can't speak to exactly how this fits in with the still well plan guidelines, but I do know the stipulation that staff recommends here is similar to the previous stipulation. I think the only plan the applicant has here, and I could have uh, Judd Clausen answer this to, to clarify. I believe the only plan for lighting on this site will be building mounted lighting. If there's any other lighting though proposed, it can be allowed provided it meets these requirements for the maximum 3000 K LED. Um, and then be down lighting. Um, I don't know how this fits in with the still well. Usually the height is what Ken usually references. Do we know what the height of the lights will be? Or, or is it gonna be exactly similar to- You can have the app okay. clarify that uh, certainly. And one other thing we'll do too, uh, if this conditional use permit is approved as stipulated, we will have a, there will be a building permit application required and the applicant would need to provide any details for lighting and would have to meet whatever the requirements are. Okay, thanks. Just trying to stay consistent with what we've always done before, so thanks. Just one brief question, Rod Robinson. Um, I noticed that the permit length on this was previously 30 years and that's what's being requested here. Um, what is the current 
I mean, do we have a specific policy on how long COPs can go? I mean, this 30 years makes sense for this one, given that structures and the use, but what is our policy on that? Or is it unit by unit, so to speak? Yeah, so the um, regulations talk about the a term of a CUP and initial condition of use permit is typically 10 years. However, the board and, and the zoning board can make a recommendation and the board of county commissioners can approve any changes to a term to be shorter or longer, depending on the situation here because this application uh, previously had a 30 year term and there were no issues and with uh, any enforcement matters or violations, we would recommend that same term. Uh, there is no real policy on it. Once we get into a renewal, it could be, you could even have a longer term potentially, but it's, uh, we usually try to keep it within that time frame between 20 and 30 years on a renewal because that's kind of a typical planning review policy that falls within like a comprehensive review plan term. We would be looking at 20 to 30 years. So that's a, that's what we try to be consistent with because land uses may change in the surrounding area, but it, because this operation has had no previous issues, we think a 30 year term is appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right. Uh, that would bring us to the applicant. Any comments you have, Mr. Clausen? Thank you, board. Um, my name is Judd Clausen, uh, 1270 North Winchester, Olathe, Kansas with Phelps Engineering. Uh, we're just really here for questions. I wanted to introduce Mr. Bob Snyder uh, with, uh, who's the owner, represents the owner of ESS Properties LLC and Emory Sapp and Sons who operates the contracting business out of this. So um, to answer the commissioner's question, uh, there's two, there's some existing uh, parking lot pole lights that are that are there in the parking lot as well as the building lights those are all staying we're not modifying those the new addition will also have some wall lights on them that are in compliance with I think it was uh, just stipulation 11 that downward facing and the Kelvin rating and and those and uh, those are things that will be evaluated um, with the building permit application but we intend to comply with the county's regulations on lighting. Uh, so with that, we'll stand for any other questions you may have. And we thank you for considering our application tonight. Thank you, Mr. Clausen, and welcome, uh, sir. Uh, any questions of Mr. Clausen uh, from the board? Uh, and you're, you're agreeable to all of the stipulations, uh, including the, the revision to stipulation one, which accepts things there for repair basically yeah we appreciate that clarification on number one but yes my client is agreeable to those stipulations okay all right uh well if there's nothing further uh, from you to us or us to you that would bring us to the open public hearing do we have anybody signed up virtually to speak is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this matter that hasn't hearing none uh, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. <clears throat> Ken Sanderson. Um, I went out and looked at the site and uh, drove back in there. Foster Court's a busy little street in there. There's a vacant office building at the front of the thing currently, but it's a well, well thought out cul-de-sac with a uh, good, good traffic. You back up to the highway on one side with this addition, you back up to the railroad tracks in the back of the thing. Uh, it looks like it's a, it's a good use for you. And it was, Looked like when the first building was put in there, this this was left room to the west there to accommodate this building. So I really think it's a good plan. I think it's well thought out. It's a good little industrial park. You're close to Metcalf. It's gravel to the west of you, down 207th. Uh, that I kind of wandered in the back road to get in there, but uh, I like to go look at these projects before we see them on a, a given evening. And uh, I'd recommend a, a motion to uh, approve. Uh, and recommend approval to a revision to a conditional use permit for a contractor office shop and outdoor storage yard to allow to the existing shop and to the construction of a new vehicle and equipment washing building and to add uh, stipulation one that staff pointed out uh, and for uh, the reasons outlined in the staff report to approve it. Before I figured I... I'll, I'll second it. Um, I also, I guess before we did that, I, I had a couple of comments I, I wanted to make. Go ahead. 
Um, so I don't live too far from this um, this operation. I live near it. Um, it's it's a busy operation. Um, they're very busy right now. They're heavily involved in the 69 expansion. Um, they do an excellent job with their operation. Their uh, large trucks are in and out of here all the time. They obey the, um, you know, the stop signs. If they have to get big trucks in and out, they're very considerate of the traffic, the bicyclists on the road. Um, very little activity on the weekends. I mean, sometimes they have a few trucks going in and out on Saturday if they have crews working on 69 or whatever. Very little on Sunday, very little after hours. You know, um, I, I think the, you know, enhancement um, to the property here could only be positive for, uh, you know, I support it. Um, I think the impact on the surrounding area will be minimal much less than some other things that have recently come before us that are gonna be a huge negative impact to our community. Um, so I, I think it's, um, you know, I think they've been a very good neighbor to the residents that live in Stillwell. I know they sponsor things in the area, not that that's supposed to matter, but to Mr. Snyder that's there, um, appreciate the way you run your business and um, to Judd as well. So I fully support what you guys are doing and. I drove back there as well. It seems like it would fit fit the property superbly. Very good, thank you. Yeah, the, um, oh, I'll just say um, basic, this is Kelly Rass. I as well drove by, everybody must've been out at work because it was very quiet. <laughs> there wasn't any, any activity going on back there. Um, it's tucked away, it's off Metcalf. It's very nicely done all back there. So. Um, I feel like it's a very appropriate usage of the PEC three and I'll just be blunt and say, unlike the soccer Metcalf complex that Fred probably was referring to, but no, I think it's an excellent use and they do a very nice job. It's Rod Richardson. I, I, I just endorse the comments that have been made. It looks like, a, uh, uh, there's absolutely no reason, uh, to object to this that I can see. It certainly shows a commitment by the owners to, uh, improve their location to their benefit and to the benefit of the community in the way it's used. So I certainly uh, will support the motion that has been made. But before we do that, I want to make sure the record reflects that we've closed the public hearing. So uh, I can't recall whether I need a motion for that or not, but I'm going to ask for one just to be clear. I, I need a motion to close the public hearing. Kelly Rass, I make a motion to close the pub public hearing. Second, Ken Sanderson. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Public hearing is closed. Now we need a second to Mr. Sanderson's motion. Fred Winger, second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clausen. Sir? Mr. Chair, uh, Sean Penley, planning staff, I'd just like to note, uh, so this application will be considered for final action by the Board of County Commissioners on September 5th at 9.30 a.m. in the board hearing room, uh, which is here at uh, 111 South Cherry Street in Olathe. Well, that's after Labor Day then, uh, right after, September 5th. Then. Right after Labor Day for okay. the final Well, action. Judge making notes, so yeah. he needs to be here probably. Yeah, yeah, we would appreciate that. Thank you. All right, very good. Any other business to come before the board? or be brought before the board. Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Kelly Ken Rast. Sanderson, so moved. Second, Kelly Rast. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle.